Welcome to The Bow Dudes, a podcast about archery and the lives it has ruined. The Bow Dudes are not responsible for diminishing archery skills or lower IQ. I worry about breathing. Shut up, Jude. And I'm totally lost. God, I keep having to remember that we're PG-13. Super did help you with those pants? <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> I'm so glad you have yourself to crack up. Logic and common sense will not be tolerated. This is a very interesting podcast so far. <laughs> Welcome back to another Bow Dudes podcast. Tonight it's just me and Pib and Gary. Nobody else decided to show up. And we even planned it on a Friday night so they could be here. Did we even tell them? Yeah. Oh, we did? It was on GroupMe. Oh. <clears throat> Pretty they sure all responded. Nobody showed up. That's right. I think Vinny and Bob might be a little busy. They're setting up Carroll County. For yeah, I think they're pretty worn out. <laughs> what are they setting up for? The uh, yearly state ASA championship, Missouri State. And they said that the range this year is completely, completely different. different than what it's ever been. So, Hey, can I still shoot for shooter of the year? <laughs> <laughs> you had to go there. <laughs> no, I was just asking. I may get a wild hair. You never know. It's a little late for that. It'll yeah. be really, really wild if I get one. But <clears throat> I could let you shoot as a guest. You could. I'm going to use a range finder just yell, 48! <laughs> but anyway, tonight we're going to... the right number. <laughs> Shoot everything, 37, <laughs> boys. Hold <laughs> high and low. <laughs> WR method. Yep. You're still bugged about not being able to shoot a single pin in Hunter, aren't you? A little bit. I'll get over it one day. So we go into that tonight? I mean, we've, done, we've gone no. into it every single podcast so far, so... Yeah, you, I think we. Yeah, should. it's time to get over butter. <laughs> and, and, and why can't you use a rangefinder all the time? Never went deer hunting without <sighs> one, unless I forgot it. Yeah, let's jump into um, let's jump into known yardage versus unknown. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we probably better. Not hang do on, that. hang on. Let's, <laughs> is there any dead horses around here? Because I'm gonna go beat the crap probably out of it. Better not do that. <laughs> what we will start off doing is what we did in archery this week, and it has <clears> been <throat> hotter than hell. All week long. H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> so I did go out and shoot the other night after I got off work. We work in a furnace anyway, unlike some people. No, who, I actually work in a furnace. Yeah, you do actually work <laughs> in a furnace. And mine feels like almost a furnace. And uh, Pib rides around in a uh, air-conditioned luxury bulldozer. So uh, anyway. Our, was, sus- our suspension hey, is probably better than his. It, it wasn't always like that. <laughs> years and years of doing it to get to that air-conditioned dozer. Did you used to have to ride in them without any tops on them at all? And- when I first started operating heavy equipment, I ran what was called a, they call them scrapers, they're earth movers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, it the, the machine that I ran that summer, what they had done is the engine sits, sits to your right. Mm-hmm. So in the wintertime, they take a torch and they cut a flap next to the engine and yep. bend it out. So you get heat off the motor. Mm -hmm. Well, when I tried to push that flat back in, the flat broke. So I had I just had a hole that that shot engine heat on my right leg for ten hours a day. What kind was it, John Deere? Cat. Cat. So yeah, we've got a we've got one at the farm. It's been sitting in the same place for about fifteen years. The tires about a foot down in the ground. I was up there the other day. I said, "I go. What are we gonna do with that?" He goes. This winter, we're going to pull the motor and get it running. I'm like, great. That's just great. <laughs> hey, it'll probably still work. Oh, it'll run. I'll guarantee it. He's one of those few people in the world that can leave a lawnmower engine sitting outside for like seven years, then walk up to it, kick it, put gas in it, and pull it, and it'll start. Yeah. First time every time. I, I don't go know outside how. and tell the cicadas to shut up. I didn't. But I thought last year was the year of the cicada. I know. We found one inside at work today. Huh. I didn't think they were supposed to be out this year. The scrapers are great. I mean, they take forever to move dirt. Like if you're, because we built levees with them. <laughs> it, 
it's amazing what they'll do. Yeah. And it don't seem like you're really taking much off. And you look back, you got a hole four or five feet deep. Yeah. We've done ponds with them. Just uh, strip ponds when we were raising catfish and stuff. Just build the whole hole with it. And so after it this, sides. after this commercial from Caterpillar, we'll be, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be right back with the heavy machinery uh, podcast. Hey, those things are fun. Everybody just turned. They it, are. Till th- you everybody just turned it like off. Playing with a hey, Tonka toy all they're, the time. <laughs> they're really fun till you have to do it for a living. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. It's kind of like scraping cars. But anyway, so, should we talk archery? Let's let's. Nah. Let's what? do. Uh, what we're gonna we, bore everybody with that. Jack again. started with what we did in archery this. You week. go. You go I, first because we did the same thing. You go first, and we'll talk about it. Ah man, I had a pretty good, cool deal the other day. Uh, one of our listeners, Brian Harris, mm-hmm. showed up with a whole roll of nice, uh, out actual outdoor wire instead of my uh, extension cord with uh, wire nuts that I have my old light wired with. And he ran all new wire and the junction box out to my range and hung we hung two new lights out there and and uh man, one o'clock in the morning you can shoot in daylight out there really? now. It's nice. Your whole range? How far out can you well, see with the lights? You can see almost you you can probably see fifty. So <laughs> nice. It's my forty yard target is really lit up, and that's yeah. what I really cared about. Right, <clears throat> but you could you could set animals out there anywhere from you know, twenty seven to forty five and shoot pretty easy. So if you ever have to shoot really early in the morning in an ASA shoot, you'll be prepared. Mm, no, no you because shoot it's daylight. daylight. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but didn't but, wasn't one of the shoots this year. They didn't really. Get the times right, and it was, like, dark when they were supposed to be starting. Yeah, we started at, like, 7. And it was still dark? Yeah. We, we waited a half hour to start shooting. <laughs> and and it, it wasn't really dark, but we were down in the timber. Or tim- tender? Timber. Timber. <laughs> timber. <laughs> so it was still dark down. What do you have in, is there anything besides Coke in that glass? No, no. This is pure Dr. Pepper for Mr. Oh, Pibb. Okay. From Mr. <laughs> or for Mr. Pibb. Mm-hmm. For the Pibb. That's what it was. So Dr. Pepper for the pit. We did that. Um, what day did we do that? And then it's 130 degrees outside here in Missouri, and you're making your poor wife go out and change targets around for you. She's been moving targets just about daily for me, but she does it in the morning. It's like she has a helper cat. Don't don't think for a second that she's doing it because she she cares how you know she's out of the goodness of her heart. Oh really? Did no. she listen to this? No, she yeah, she listens to it <laughs> weekly. She's, she's doing it because she's tired of me paying that entry fee and not getting any money back. That oh. was what I was gonna say. <laughs> so she's telling no, you, you can't that. blame her for that. You know, it, it's been going pretty good. I'm here I've been pretty uh I've been within a yard on most everything and a couple of nights ago I had a little setback. I was judging everything a couple of yards hot and mm-hmm. and uh the next day went back to so we've been keeping a a log book of the targets I'm judging, the distance, the oh uh, light to dark, dark to light, um, animals that are where she's been doing a real good job of taking the ground away from me. So, how do you think that's helping? I've heard a lot of people that do that. Do you think it helps? Man, I, I can tell you that. In London and Metropolis, it helped me a bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, it, uh, it it's really being a ground judger and going to just trusting your gut and looking at the target is it's hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I still use the ground to confirm, but it, it's it's a different deal. It's but what she's doing has really helped me gain the confidence to just look at it and come up with a number. Yeah. So. Well, um, I think that could be helpful to even just a guy who bow hunts. Oh, I am. Instead of just going out in your backyard and flinging arrows, you know, kind of keep a little journal of, uh, you know. Of course, if I'm, this is not something that most people probably wouldn't know, but if somebody's new to archery, you know, mark your arrows, number them or give them names or something like that. And then you can keep a journal and you can know that your number nine arrow is consistently hits low left or something like that. There's right. probably, you know, 
that may be an arrow you don't want to use in competition or in hunting or I used to name or I used to put names on my arrows, believe it or not. Jack was on one of them. <laughs> Brett was on one of them. Thunder was on one of them. And if I was in their group, I'd shoot that arrow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and I used to number my stuff. Now I, I, I've kind of quit numbering them. I'll, you know, if they're all hitting the same, I won't bother number them. Right. But I, I will tell you this though. I'll pick one that's hitting right for me on tournament day at an ASA or whatever. And, I'll separate it and I'll shoot it all day until somebody blows a knock up or yeah, hits it or whatever. Yep. Hmm. And it's just a little superstition thing I do. Yeah. I numbered mine for a while. Then I realized I had target panic, couldn't shoot. They were all bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you just go buy another dozen, number all them. You're like, well, crap. <laughs> you come up with about eight dozen arrows and they don't make a difference. Archery but, and the lives it's ruined. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the wallets it's ruined and all yep. that stuff. But. So another thing I did in archery this week was I put a new rest on my wife's bow last night. Mm-hmm. It had it's an it's an elite E thirty five, and one thing I learned was you know the old trophy taker pronghorn style dropaways we all used to shoot with that down cable on that bow, the, the timing of it of the down cable makes it to where. The rest doesn't come up with the pronghorn until the very last second. So if you draw it too hard, it pops the arrow up off the rest. And her arrows were short enough. I had the guide thing stuck on her shelf, you know, to guide the arrow on it. Mm -hmm. When she'd pop it up, it'd, it'd fall off and fall behind that and get stuck there. Well, last night she informed me that she'd had enough of that. <laughs> and and the, how did she inform you of that? She pretty much just told me. <clears throat> okay. And requested that I put a blade on it. So I get to digging around in my vax, vast box of junk over there and can't find a blade. It's been traded on something or, or whatever. Four or five of them laying over there a couple weeks ago. I know. And uh, she said, well, what kind of rest do you have? I said, well, I got this hamskia. Well, why is it not on my bow? I said, well, I've been saving it for my hunting bow. Well, you don't have a hunting bow. I want it on my rest, on my <laughs> bow. So she's got a nice ham skia on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, she told me this evening she got it sighted in, and left and right was good after I paper tuned it. And she had, uh, she gained three yards on her sight tape, so that was, she was happy about that. So... Why do you think she did? Why do you think she gained yardage? Well, just because of the height of the of the rest, mm-hmm. the the uh, you know when you drop back and it comes up, it's probably a little bit further up in the burger hole than than the other rest was. Right. Just a different style. So, so, okay. so you didn't move anything on the back end, then you left it all the same. Right. And I left her D loop so, and all that stuff the same. And I, so it could be a little of both. Yeah. Level going up the front. So it did shoot a good clean hole though. And she seemed to be happy with it. And she was struggling nine percent of it. She was she was, she was getting some lefts out of it that she she, was, she couldn't explain. Usually she knows when, you know, something goes wrong, you know, what it is that she did wrong. Mm-hmm. And she was getting some unexplained lefts and she just told me here a while ago that those went away. So she That's may good. have, with that other rest, she may have getting, been getting some fletching contact or random. Yep, probably. Or something. So, but We know about fletching contact, don't we? Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> Trying we to do. get that one of mine straight well, You know, I, I, I wasn't a fan of this rest when, when they first came out. And it was because I didn't know anything about them. Yeah. But the more I mess with them, the more I like them. So... You know, I was always a dyed in the wool trophy taker guy. Yeah, me too. And I put a ham ski on my uh, on my bow this year and love it. It's yeah. they're they're sweet. Yeah, I think those those guys are those guys are all target archers, and I think they're getting it figured out. And there's nothing wrong with trophy taker rest. Believe me, that's been the I still shoot it. Yeah, that's been the bread our bread and butter for a lot of years. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Every Hoyt I ever owned, I had one. Right. Yep. 
So, and I still can't believe you haven't put that Pro Series online yet. Which one? The one you bought. I'm not sure. I'm you still got to sit at your house, don't you? Or did you sell it? What is it now? Somebody took, somebody you, spoke for that, but you took it. Oh off. yeah, I kept forgetting. But I guess you don't need it now, huh? No, I don't need so, it. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. The SmackDown you, Pro. Yeah, you took it off before you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For whatever reason, that and that's a great rest. For whatever reason, um, we couldn't get it to shoot good out of my bow. And it's not that it's not that it's a bad rest. It's just you know sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes think you know yeah. certain bows don't like certain things. Yeah, and but. The that, guy, that was on the, the, guy who, the guy who was putting it on, um, he said, this rest works awesome on all these other bows. It's just your bow for some reason. And it's just this model, your bow. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't want to work for whatever reason. Well, you know, it, archery's just, archery can just drive you crazy that way. It can. It, it's just, you know, just little bitty things like that. Well, you, you, know? can, you can say what kind of bow it is because, I mean. Yeah, I have a work carbon time. spider. And it wouldn't work on yours, mm -hmm. but I've got the cheaper version of the SmackDown. The uh, MFX or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It worked just fine on yours. Yeah, we put it on a carbon matrix, and it works fine. Yeah. And so, Doug super tuned it, and it works. Yeah. I mean. Works great. And it could be my arrow combination. If I changed arrows, it might have worked just fine. Yeah. You know. Well, you're, you, couldn't get the, uh, you couldn't get your arrows to shoot very good out of that matrix either. And then when I went with a heavier arrow, because remember you made the front of center on yours, you put the brass insert in the front? Yeah, I'm using the hex, hex 330s, and I have a 50-grain brass insert in the front. And it didn't shoot good. But when we yeah. went with a heavier arrow, when I started shooting the full metal jackets, yeah. I mean, just when we changed that, I think at your house, we didn't even move anything. Yeah. And it started shooting bullet holes. That's one thing that can get expensive about this sport is... Finding out what works. Yeah. It's the accessories, man. It, it it's, <laughs> it's finding out what works. And it's just... You know, to find out what works, you may have to ruin two or three or more uh, $20 arrows. Right. You know, because you, you cut one, you think this is the length it needs, and it's too short. Yep. And, well, can't use that arrow well, anymore. Right. What were we talking about today, me and you and Bob? The kill zones are now thirty nine ninety nine for a three-pack. That's yeah. almost $14 an arrow. Right. I mean, for a broadhead, it's crazy. It's yep. you know when I when when I used to have my Harley Davidson, that was the hundred dollar store. Every time you walked in, it was a hundred dollars. And when I took up archery, and Barb decided that either the Harley or the Jeep needed to go, so they both went. So I ended up doing just the archery, and it's not gotten really all that much cheaper. No, because every time you walk in the store, it's still a hundred dollars. You got to put gas in it every day. <laughs> when we were when we were shooting, target bows were outrageous at seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Right now they're fourteen. Yep, and the hunting bows are twelve. Right, <laughs> you know, and unless so. you need a good one. Well, <laughs> and th th for some reason this shameless one, plug here. Yeah, <laughs> when I was I was, was working in the bow shop at Rogers years ago, I remember when the first Bowtex came out. And they retailed for like eight hundred bucks, and everybody's like, oh, "I'm spending eight hundred eight hundred dollars. That's crazy, you know." It that just stuck out, you know, because you could buy a a Matthews or uh, you know an AR or a Jennings for five, six, seven, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. An AR was Archery Research, mm -hmm. yes, and that was a that's PSE, right? A it PSE was, it branch. Was, yeah, it was a branch PSE. Yeah, great bows that just weren't very fast. Yeah. I, tell you I what, shot I had, one for a long time. I had a Ross for a long time, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. And somehow Jake ended up with that, believe it or not. <laughs> they were a good smooth shooting bow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But uh, anyway, what what we do in our tree, Jack? Were you done, Jim? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Well, the other night by myself, I went out and shot, and he I got said by himself. He I got on me. 24 <laughs> arrows shot, and sweat was just pouring down my forehead into my eyes and stuff. I said, screw this. <laughs> I don't you know? blame you. And uh, <laughs> Did you tell Debbie what we did to her tree? No. Okay, good. We had to do some pruning. But we went out. <laughs> we're going to be shooting out of uh, we're going to be shooting out of ground blinds and so we took a couple chairs out, a couple blind chairs out in the backyard and um, set them up and it was a little warm. So we went over it under. Warm. It was hot. It was hot. And we went over underneath uh, her weeping willow tree. 
and there was a few branches in the way, and so I don't think she noticed them yet. <laughs> I'm sure just, she will. Let's just say you can sit up against that tree because there's there's a flower bed thing around it. Yeah, and you can sit you can sit underneath that tree, and there's some very good shooting lanes coming right out of <laughs> right out of it. That, it worked, so. and it's it's great. For shade, yeah. too. I mean, it's like an umbrella that goes all the way around. I did some tree perfect. trimming the other night. Yep. Unexpectedly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the hood of your truck. Right. You Got to love those. Uh, what kind of trees are those? Bradford uh, pears. Bradford pears. <laughs> my sister-in-law used to have them, and every one of them ended up down in her yard. Yep. But My neighbors all ended up down on my fence. Yeah. That was great. But anyway, we did that. We did some filming. We Gary's got a GoPro. I got a Garmin Verb. I think the GoPro's... V- picture might be a little bit better it's hard to tell the verb's they, pretty good they were good for for what the verb cost compared to the gopro yeah I, you know we, we're not going to advertise for either one but right it that was a good camera yeah. that is a and if anybody's looking camera. for an action camera the thing that was driving me nuts is all these accessories you want a harness for your dog it's 70 bucks if you want a, a, a chest, chesty yeah. it's 30 40 bucks or more and we went on amazon and you can get a whole kit with all that stuff for 30 bucks. Yeah. I mean, it's got 55 pieces in it. Now, is it going to last as long? I don't know. But I'll make it. It's going to last for enough to, you know, well, to use and before I have to buy another. And I, I kind of look at it like this, and this is the same conversation we had, basically. How many times can I buy one of those kits for what I'm going to pay for one dog harness? Right. Yep. You know, I can get at least two kits. There's 110 pieces. I'm not going to wear all of them out before I wear out that one particular piece. Yeah. And, you know, like uh, when you go buy a battery and an additional charger, look online and buy stuff online because I bought mine. I bought it in a, a a shop, but it was like a recovery sales place. I paid 39 bucks for a battery and a dual charger. Yeah. So you got to look around. You can shop. You can find it. But if it doesn't have the name brand on it, some people... You know, it's like going to Walmart. Some people won't do it. Right. But, man, you can wear out two or three of them cheap ones and still won't cost you near as much as that, yeah. <laughs> that one good one. And you can. So I basically yeah. sat there and held a selfie stick and filmed Gary shooting. And then we took my vert with his GoPro and we took my verb down. We put it on one of those little uh, tripod like deals looking up at the target and we videoed some stuff. And so that's on the bow dudes page. And, um, I think I might start us a, a YouTube page. We have a, I have a Vimeo page. It's kind of a private one, but you can go look under Jack Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N, or it may be under Bow Dudes. I don't know on Vimeo, and you can look it up. It has those on it, and it has a bunch of, of other <clears throat> videos that you guys can watch. But We didn't get I, the one downloaded yet because of your Internet's not the fastest in the world, but we got video of I, you shooting too, which was. Where I live, it takes one hour to download one minute of video. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you can come down here and use my Wi-Fi. Yeah. Well, I, that and Gary and my son Dylan have Google Fiber. So I sent three videos home with Dylan the other day, and he called me. He goes, hey, your videos are done. I go, you got to be kidding me. He goes, nope. He goes, it took me less than two minutes to upload three videos, and they were like four or five-minute videos each. Wow. <laughs> on it's, Google Fiber. It's it, just unbelievable. It is fast. <laughs> so you're, you're like, ah. Pulling yeah. your out over that. Yeah. So we're we gonna got, we bought Sam that new MacBook Pro for college. Mm-hmm. That that's like that old Google modem Fiber. days. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got an hourglass finally. It's doing something. <laughs> it's spinning. <laughs> it's gonna... dialing. Shh, it's dialing. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. I think we may be doing a video here pretty quick about uh shooting out of a ground blind. Um off a chair. Off a chair and maybe put a target five yards in front of the blind. And shoot it with our 20-yard pin and see what happens. Oh, that'd be cool. You know, and stuff like that. So we could probably do that right out back here. Yep. So. Just trying to do different stuff. Change yeah. it up a little bit. You know, one thing yeah. about shooting out of a ground blind, we're going to be talking, we're we're thinking about doing talking about bow hunting a little bit tonight. One thing about shooting out of a ground blind, I've done it personally, and my sons have, have shot through several of my va- blinds, is just because your sight has an open view out that window doesn't, doesn't mean, mean your, your arrow, arrow does. Yeah. You know, have so, you yeah. all ever taken an animal out of a ground blind? I shot that antelope out of a ground blind. Yep. Did you shoot through netting or? I did shoot through netting. Um, where I went, I went out to Fred Eichler's, and that's where we're getting getting ready to go again here in three weeks. And uh, Fred said to shoot out of it, and he said that it it doesn't affect the arrow at all. 
Now, I was shooting a tro car, a fixed blade broadhead. Right. And I don't know if you could shoot a like a kill zone through it or something like that. That's the only thing. From what I've heard is it will not open it up. Because yep. as soon as the tip hits it, that stuff spreads out enough. Because, you know, you usually put the mesh up right. where it's pretty tight. And as soon as that cuts it, the rest of the arrow. Well, you know what? Through. We could probably test that. We'll yeah, get, I got a bunch of that stuff we can put up. Yeah, we'll just put that. We'll just put it up and shoot through it because I hardly ever use it when I'm hunting. I've got an old uh, double bull here. We could try that out of. Yeah, it's, we, it's already been shot through. Yeah, so yeah. if you guys don't want to, right? Nope. We'll 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 shoot some mechanicals through the We're mesh do that. and see if they open up. We need to put up a tree stand too. Put a tree back here and just see the difference. Yeah. You know, for uh, stuff like that. I don't know if you were around back then or not, Jack. But uh, I used to have a tree stand just right outside the door here that we shot from. And uh, I've actually got video of Katie when she was like seven years old, 20 feet up, strapped in and yeah. shooting her little rind. How much of a She's difference kind of crazy does, anyway. Though, how much of a difference does it make? <laughs> if you're going to hunt out of a tree stand, should you sight your bow in out of a tree stand if possible? Oh, uh, yeah. You're going to hit high? Yeah, a little bit. I mean... I mean, we did it for a reason. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if you're like me and you shoot low anyway, shooting out of a tree stand ought to help. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to do just to get the practice of doing it. Yeah, because yeah, you can shoot off the ground. On the yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or even practice. You may not have. You may have a deer slip in on you, and kind of knows you're there, where you can't stand up. So you might want to practice. Yes, sir. Not only drawing your bow without having to sky draw it, but sitting in a sitting down on a tree stand and shooting from that, you know, because you don't know if your cam's going to hit your stand. You don't know. You may have to shoot with the string between your legs. You may have to shoot with the string off to your side. Yep. You you know, practice all that. Well, and you, and you, something else you need to be aware of too is like everybody's wearing hunter safety systems and mm-hmm. and safety harnesses nowadays and. With your uh, your rope that you attach to the tree, you need to be aware of where it's at, what it's doing. You know, it can, can get caught can, on your arm as you pull as you draw mm-hmm. the bow back. Can you turn this way? Can you turn right. that way? That's something you need to practice too, because I've I've been in a tree stand and went to draw on something and couldn't get my arm back because of that rope or yep. the, the harness strap. Right, that's a good you know? point. And that Very was good point. something that I'd never thought about till I started wearing one. I mean, back mm-hmm. in the day. You just run a strap around the tree and a uh, strap around your waist and hook your heels on the edge of the stand and lean out and shoot. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, when <laughs> more, come when, we're not all dead. When, I know, right? <laughs> Mortality sets in. And that's the important thing anymore. There's no excuse anymore for not being safe in a tree stand. Um, even putting the tree stand up, this time of year you guys need to be out checking straps because if you leave your, tri- your stands and your trees all year long, they're going to get dry rotted. If the squirrels yep. don't chew them, they're going to dry rot, yep. you know? So I would go up. I would take another ratchet strap. If you, even if you think the strap is good, I'd double strap it. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got a bunch of them around here. that are double strap. Yeah. And make sure your bolts are all nice and tight and things like that. There's so many people get injured every year stepping in a tree stand. They think it's safe. If, you if know, your stand they just squeaks. didn't bother to take the time to right. go out ahead of time and check it. If your stand squeaks a little bit, like there's a movable part on it or something, go ahead and grease it now. You know, yeah. uh, so they'll get used to that smell. So, you know, there's farm machinery in the fields all the time, and those guys <laughs> are those guys grease those <laughs> tractors every single day. You know, so they're smelling like grease. You know, yep. they have to. And so the animals will get used to it if you if you grease it up I, now. I, you know what I do when we're when we're deer hunting at the farm. We have, we raise quail and pheasants, mm-hmm. and we've got big outside pens on our, and our 18 uh, wheeler trailers. We've got quail in there, and it smells like bird crap all the time. Yeah. If I'm going to go walk down through where I'm going to go hunt before I leave, I'm going to go put my boots on, walk through the pheasant pens for a little bit and get that bird crap all over my shoes, take them off, put them in the back of the truck, drive to where I'm going, put them back on and walk in. Yeah. It doesn't bother them. We have... It's a shooting preserve, actually, so there's people up there hunting all the time. Right. So they're used to the smell of people and the smell of birds. Let's get bird crap on my feet and yep. go hunting. And I don't go to the tree stand 
with gasoline all over my clothes and stuff anymore. But I used to get so concerned about it that it was almost getting to where it wasn't fun anymore. Right. And so I'm thinking, you know, I used to kill deer before I changed clothes at the truck in the freezing cold. <laughs> I used to kill I used to kill deer before I, you know, took and I still get up and take a shower usually and everything. But you're 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 trying to hunt with the wind in your face anyway. Right. You know. Well, look and, at us last year sitting in the truck. Oh yeah, we've been look out at riding those pictures, four wheelers. You're like, let's go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Gary's deer he killed last year. We'd been out riding four wheelers, mm-hmm. and Gary, around your property. Yeah, and we rode right up to the camera of the deer that Gary killed. We was in that field. Yep, and we had to turn around right where that deer walked. Mm-hmm. And we drove. We didn't get off the four wheeler. We drove right up to the camera and got the film out. We went back to the truck. And we started looking at film. We took all our stuff just in case, but it was getting kind of late in the afternoon. We were both kind of like it was what three thirty, four o'clock. Yeah. We we're I don't know if it was that late, but it's yeah, it's pretty getting pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah. And we were like, I don't know, man. You know, I don't know if we're gonna get any time to hunt or not. We got in the car and I had my computer with me. And we stuck that we stuck the cards in and started going through. And Gary's buck was there on at, on Monday at three thirty in the afternoon. <clears throat> Tuesday at three thirty four in the afternoon. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all at the well, same he, time. He kept getting a little bit later. Yeah. Like it was, I think, uh, Thursday or Friday, whatever yeah. it was, it was right at 6. So hey, I looked at Gary. And, yeah. yeah. I said, I looked at Gary and I said, let's go. I mean, honestly. And if, we even drove the four-wheelers to the top of the hill. If we wouldn't have had the four-wheeler loaded up already, we probably would have been driving home. Yeah. Because we were both just beat. I mean, we'd been, yeah. we'd planted. It was, getting, we'd, it was getting so late, we drove the four-wheeler to the top of the hill, which was what? 150 yards, if that, from the tree stand. Yep. And we walked down. We both had to get in the tree stand. We both and had we weren't, to. We didn't, we didn't go out of our way to be extra quiet. Mm-mm. We didn't try to make a lot of noise, but. Had to set the camera. The deer know up. you're going to be there anyway. Yeah. Well, so, they already heard us down in there driving around the floor. Yeah. Sure enough. Actually, I'm turning the other way filming a raccoon, and he starts tugging on my pant leg, and. Our deer had walked out because it was it was already past his pattern time, and we didn't think yeah. he was going to come out. But and he did. You know, going back to the range finding thing, I didn't pick my range finder up once when that deer walked in that field because he walked straight over to where the uh, trophy rock was. Mm-hmm. And Jack goes, "How far is he?" I said, thirty eight yards." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah. already checked it, yeah. and he took two steps back. Jack goes, "Where are you going to shoot him at?" I go, "I got the pin on forty, and he's standing at forty. Yeah, but so. yeah, that I can't tell you how many times. Over the years, I'd work till, you know, 3.30 all day long in a machine, smelling like diesel, and come home and not have time to get showered up, just put on my scent blocker suit and go. Yeah. And, you know, I, yep. I think personally, you got to cover your breath. But you hunt, you? Um, you hunt city deer. Oh, don't go so. there. <laughs> So anyway. I don't, in case hey, anybody's wondering what we're talking biggest, about, I put on my I put on my hunting clothes, stopped <laughs> stopped a quick trip and got a Slurpee, and <laughs> and finished walking to my stand. Walked out to walked out behind Quick Trip, got in my stand, shot a deer, gutted it, went in Quick Trip, it, cleaned up, went in Quick Trip, washed my hands, got another Slurpee. <laughs> Actually, it was like I'm gonna say that was like Double Tree Hotel or something. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> But anyway, where's what are you talking about? Um, we're gonna have to, we're you know what we're gonna have to go on Google Maps one day and get a get a printout of your property and just show people where you actually live. No, not the address. Then they'll sneak kinda, in. He's got enough people. Sneaking no, no, in no just not the address. Just kind of oh. general area where you can see that there's houses and stuff around yeah. here. But you're in a rural enough area. You got a place to hunt. It's it's really nice that you can do that. I mean, oh, man. literally step out the back door and go. Two hundred. I, I mean, I've got to stand less than a hundred yards from where we're sitting. You got to stand less than forty yards. From <laughs> what are you talking about? It's a good try, though. <laughs> he said less than a hundred, so forty yeah. falls in less than well, hundred. Okay, sorry. So, <laughs> that way, a little more realistic. The, but, be, the best one is the the stand that's like two hundred yards from here. Yeah, yeah, that's the good one. Oh, I know. What I was going to say another thing about that deer that Gary killed. People that you know don't have a lot of money for um, food plots and stuff. We mowed 
of course, this isn't helping if you don't have a tractor with a brush hog, but we mowed down brush that was, um, yeah, it was six to seven good, feet tall. Yeah. It was above my head. Yeah. And um, I had to drive through it with my four-wheeler, and my nephew was on the tractor behind me with a brush hog because he was afraid he was going to hit a log or something. So I had to drive through it. He was behind me mowing. We mowed it all down, took out turnip seed, and threw it down on the ground, drove back over over it, back and forth with the four-wheeler. And how good that, that food plot came up excellent, it was, didn't it? You know, it was fantastic. The <clears throat> conservation agent well, said you don't want turnip seed in the ground more than eighth of an inch or quarter really? of an inch. Yeah. He said if you bury it too deep, it won't come mm-hmm. up. And, and then so, what did we do the year he before? He said throw it out on top of the ground. Same thing. No, on the other side where we... Oh, we tilled it. We took a... We and it didn't took come his up four-wheeler as with, with my trailer. We took a tiller down there. We mm-hmm. took everything you could possibly need and hauled it the half mile back in there. Tilled everything up. We were in there for several hours. Yeah. I, I mean, in just a little spot that was, if if it was 20 foot wide, we'd be lucky. And it was probably, what, 80 feet long? Yeah. And we just made whatever we could right there. And we, I mean, we went out of our way to plant it right. We did everything we could possibly do. And it, it wasn't enough to feed half a deer for 45 minutes. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it came up bad. Yeah. And this one last year, we planted it late, and it came up. My yeah. nephew's already got them planted this year, so he's hoping for rain. Maybe next, oh, maybe I next, uh, maybe Sunday. Yeah, Sunday maybe. But uh, yeah, he's already got them planted, and he's got he planted turnips, he planted sugar beets, and he planted uh, winter peas. So it ought to be covered for several months. Hopefully, we'll see. I want to hunt that stand on the opposite side of the field where we hunted last year. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about where that where they're up on that ridge. Mm-hmm. That's. Yeah, that's going to yeah. be fun. Yeah. But I get to film this year, so you get to shoot. Nice. <laughs> I'm, hey. I'm not going to argue. Um, <laughs> hey, believe me, we stayed in that stand for a little while last year trying to get a double, but yeah, we were. Kinda, I think we were both kind of anxious to get down. <laughs> one, thing I'm, um, one thing I've been doing the last few years as far as tree stand goes, for one, always wear a safety harness, you know, a f- uh, what do they call those? Just a full body safety. Full harness. body harness. Not just uh, a belt. hunter safety system. And, yeah, or something yeah. like that. Gorilla, and muddy, usually, whatever. Get a good one. And usually they have D rings or just even just webbing loop right on the side of each side of your waist. And you can take your um, tree stand hunt, Lime, rope, lineman, rope. lineman rope and throw it around that tree. And that way, when you're climbing up, putting tree stands up or steps, you can be pretty well hands free. Yeah. yeah, it makes you it know, really nice to lean back on it. and makes it easy. You know, and yeah. and it's Which, safe. Yeah. And then once you get your tree stand up there, your hands free. Instead of trying to clutch the tree with two hands and put the tree stand up, your hands free doing that too. And one thing we started doing a couple years ago is, and they're a little expensive, but they're worth it, is we started getting those um, lifelines. Well, real expensive. Now, you got to remember, all this stuff you can you can shop for online, but... We were at Rogers and I found the three pack. It wasn't Hunter Safety System. It was I don't, I don't even muddy, know what wasn't it? Muddy, muddy or something or like Hunter that. Hunter Specialty. Yeah, or something. yeah. And I paid, I think I paid fifty nine dollars for a three pack. For a three pack, that's cheap. That and it was, and they work just as good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's they have a prusik knock with a carabiner on it, mm-hmm. and you just hook it into your safety harness, and, and you're you just hooked all the way up, tight, and all the way yeah, down. You just you have to climb the tree once to put it up. And then from then on, you are um, you're you're hooked in. You know you got to climb the tree once, and, but then you put it on, and then as you're coming down, you're hooked in. So you, if you want to keep yourself from going too high with your tree stand, because some people get a little carried away, <laughs> tie it around, tie it around. No, I wouldn't say anything. Tie it around the bottom of the tree to start about. with, then tie it to your belt. And when you get up, yeah. you got to have enough slack to wrap around the tree and tie it off. All right. Yeah, you'll drop it down. You'll have to, it, it's a you'll 30, have to, 35 foot rope, so you're still going to be up 20 feet or so. Right, right. You'll have to tie the base to the bottom of the tree or to your ladder or whatever you're using to get up in the Don't tree. Don't tie it to the ladder. Well, you have to tie it to the, you have to tie it to the tree. You, <laughs> Whoop, there goes my stand. This you got to suck. You got to have some resistance. You got to have some resistance because as you're pulling yeah. up. You're pulling the prussic knock up as you go up the tree stand. You'll just be pulling the rope up if you don't. And normally your tree's not going to fall over, so I think all of us would yeah. recommend to tie it around the bottom bit. of the tree and then tie it around the top when you get up there. Speak. And then when you get up there, as you when you get up there with the lifeline, keep it hooked in. Put your tree stand rope, your lineman's rope, or, or your you know your safety rope around the tree, 
hook into your harness before you unplug it from the from the lifeline. You are hooked in from from the base of your tree all the way up, and from well while you're in your tree stand all the way back down. You never if, you're if never you're never unhooked. If you're hunting tandem like Jack and I were doing, we were videoing. You could still run one lifeline, just run it up in between the stands, ran a little high, and no, we didn't. We ran one lifeline, but we put a we put a safety rope above yours. And I just stayed hooked onto the lifeline. Yeah, because we, didn't, we didn't put a strap around it. I don't know if I'd recommend that. I suppose it wouldn't matter. Same thing. It's still tied around one the tree. Thing, one thing you got to watch, and I'm probably bad about this because I like to have enough slack. I can move around. You don't want to fall three or four feet. No. <laughs> you know, even if it catches you, it's going to suck. Yeah. Right. You know, you you really want to make it where you're only falling. Six inches or so, but and, that's going to make you be so tight yeah. against the tree, you know. It, and you, you got to find that happy medium for yourself, I guess. You know, and you need to have an extra rope with you just in case. That's why the uh, the harness rope or the lineman's belt works great. Because if you actually do fall out of your tree stand, you need to be able to make a loop so you can pick yourself up. Yeah, if you're hanging there, you, I mean, you'll, you can't you'll cut get, your circulation off if you don't. If you can't get back in your tree stand and you're just hanging there with your legs hanging. You're in trouble. Yeah. You have to be able yeah. to. I mean, even if you're hanging onto the rope, if you can put it down and use and lift yourself mm-hmm. up a little bit. Right. Give yourself some circulation so you don't. And cut most, circulation of, off, you'll most be good. of the harness companies include that strap and they tell you what it's for, but nobody pays attention to yep. it. And I'm bad about it, too. You just throw it in your archery, yep. your, your hunting clothes or whatever, and you don't pay attention. That strap is made to hook onto your harness and let you put a foot up in it and stand up. Mm-hmm. To take the pressure off the blood flowing down to your legs. Yeah, if you're not going to do that, you know, have usually a, a a good safety harness will have a little pouch on it somewhere. Put yeah. paracord in there. Get yourself ten or fifteen feet of paracord. You know, some wrap, of them, wrap some of the harnesses are even built to have the breakaway, to where when you do yeah. fall, yeah, it, mm-hmm. it cushions some of it that. Cushions of it. Yep. yep. A lot so, of them are going to that now. Yep. But and, Pib, you, you use a lot of tr- uh, screw-in steps, don't you? Yes, I used to. And you need to – are you not anymore? No, I I, I try to use uh, either uh, oh, climbing sticks or um, – Oh, some of these Telephone trees. Telephone pole back with Drew. It's <laughs> <laughs> already got steps built in. Look, look, right, behind look right behind you. <laughs> He's got linemen's. What are those called? Gaffs. Linemen's gaffs. I haven't used them for a couple of years. They're they're kind of hard on your ankles and knees. Oh, I bet. When you get old. but I bet. <laughs> when uh, you get old. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you, there's a, you know, I used to hunt with a guy a lot that when he started, uh, we, we I mean, we were tight. You remember him, Robert. Mm-hmm. And... You know, there was a point in time where I was so ate up with it. It's it's all I could, you know, you go to bed at night thinking about it and wake up in the middle of the night trying to figure out how you're going to get that deer. And, yep. And, well, you remember. And there was a time where I'd be, we going hunting, we going hunting. And he's like, man, I don't care. And he'd tell you, one of these days you're going to get to that age where it just doesn't mean that much to you. And don't get me wrong, I still love to 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 hunt and whatever but that have to be out there isn't there anymore i i haven't necessarily lost the have to be out there but i've definitely lost the i've got to kill so early in the morning right (laughs) because sometimes i'll be sitting there and i'm and every year i'll buy several extra doe tags You know, I don't know if they're even offering them anymore as bad as Missouri's deer herd is. We now, shouldn't. They ought to yeah. eliminate them for a while. Well, and, and I haven't had any deer meat for a couple of years now because I haven't seen anything I wanted to put a tag on. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. So this year, if it's brown, it's down because I need some back straps, right. baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but a lot of times I'll be sitting there and there'll be a buck that's kind of right on the edge. And I'll be like, I would be very happy with this deer. But it's Sunday afternoon. I'm going to have to get it out of here. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut it up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's going to be 12 o'clock when I go to bed, and i got to get up at 3.30 in the morning and go to work. Exactly. And so I just watch it. You know, yep. <laughs> you, can, I, I, uh, you know what, though? You can learn a lot just by watching. Oh, yeah. I've, I filmed I've, this deer a couple years ago, and he was he was young. but And it's on, it's on my Vimeo channel, I think, if you guys go look. And... Uh, he was young, but a lot of guys said they would have shot him. 
and I would have been happy if I'd have shot him, but I just filmed him and, uh, he went down and he put on a, he put on a, you know, a little show and then he started sneezing. I'd never really seen a deer sneeze the way he sneezed. And then the coyotes started howling. It just turned into a really cool video that I would have never had if I'd have put an arrow in him within the right. first five minutes when I saw him, you know. Well, I think I've told the story before, but I was sitting in a tree stand watching a deer. And I remember up until last year, I'd never killed anything with my bow. And I'm actually within range of shooting this deer with my bow. And it was a little four corner or something like that. And I watched this deer walk, and he kept coming at me, kept coming at me. I actually stood up. Got the bow off because Ed told me, you never kill anything, just shoot one. Okay. Right. I couldn't bring myself to shoot it because I'm watching it. I'm like, you know, it wasn't that I didn't want to kill it. But every time it'd take a step and get closer, I was looking at it like, he might be big next year. Yeah. Oh, that's some Bob, Bob Brown stuff. Brown. No, he, he might be bigger Bob next year. Brown. But oh, man. The funny part of that was, like you were saying, some of the you miss some of the best stuff if you go ahead and try to shoot it yeah. or scare it or whatever. You know, for this you, deer balled up for like a half hour and went to sleep. He well, it was kind of funny because it's almost like he had a personality of his own. Mm-hmm. He lay there and he'd try they to look do. around. He'd hold his head up and he started just dozing off like a person does. His head would drop. And he'd lift it back up and look around. Well, finally, some does went by. He's like, all right, I'm gonna get he, up and strut around. Right <laughs> oh, he got up, he strutted around. He's looking around, got his head up, tripped over a log. Yeah. Actually <laughs> tripped, both feet hung, and he fell forward over the log. Clunk, clunk. He gets up and looks around like, I don't think anybody saw that. <laughs> one year, <laughs> kind of one, of the, like, yeah, one of the funniest that. things that ever happened to me when it was, we was hunting over here <laughs> one day. <laughs> Well, the guy, outside the road. Quick the, trip. Let me preface this. The guy behind me, he's a photographer. Mm-hmm. So everything on his property is mowed and manicured. He's got nice bridges. Oh, he, he even brought in an old uh, iron bridge and set it up across the creek and mm-hmm. landscaped it with all fancy And Bucks rock. like them manicured yards. <laughs> and that's, that's so he calls it. He has great shooting lanes. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sitting on this. The, the ridge top over there, and here comes this doe by me and runs right past my stand and down the hill. I look up, and here come these three scrub bucks, just, you know, right on her heels. They go down the hill, they cross the creek, out into the CRP fi- field, and then around. And uh, I think, well, that was pretty cool. At least I know, you know, rut's on. Mm-hmm. Boy, it wasn't about... Ten minutes, here she come right back by me, going the other way. And I thought, okay. And I looked down, and here come those three bucks, and two of them just kept on. And this little forkhorn buck stops right under my tree. And he's standing there looking up over the hill to see where these guys are going. And he's panting. You know, he's he's really breathing hard. And I looked down at him, and I thought, huh. So I just... As soon as I looked over, I, I just snort wheezed him. Man, all four legs went straight out. <laughs> he hit the ground, and it was like a, it was like one of those uh, cartoons where their feet started yeah. going and they weren't, they wasn't moving. You'd have thought I, I'd shot, you know. <laughs> I thought he was gonna wet down the hill and, and everything else. <laughs> the funniest damn thing I ever seen in a tree. And then he stands up and he looks around like. Where where'd that come from? <laughs> Somebody's gonna come hurt me, you know. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Straight over the metal bridge up to the yard. <laughs> like nobody'll come up here. I mean, we've had some really fun times hunting here. You guys, you guys need to come go with me. I I, I have thrown the invite out a few times. You invite, okay, us. We can you film. invite us too much, we'll kill something. Yeah. Hey, I don't care. <laughs> there was a time when yeah, if you invite Gary, he shoots a buck. Yeah, which you're not supposed to shoot, but that's. That's you know, another, that's, at, a whole at one other, time, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> when I first started bow hunting here, it was like Jerk. Josiah forgave the me. whole mentality of it was he already missed. <laughs> the whole mentality of it was if it's brown, it's down because right. it was hard enough to kill something yeah. with a bow as it was. And as that progressed into so and so shot this buck, and it, it, it like became a competition. Yeah, and it got to the point where it wasn't fun. you know it wasn't fun. Mm-mm. But at one point, we're like we're, we're thinking we're going to be the next Drury's. You go out and you buy a, a video camera, and it's got to be a Pope and Young before yep. you can shoot it. And, and, and I don't want to put down any of those guys, but they've, no, they've, I mean, they've created that 
that's mentality's been created by that. That's their, that that's monster. their deal, and they are one. They are the best at it. They are, and I enjoy watching. But that's what they do for a living. Yes, mm-hmm. guys like us who work fifty hours a week, we don't have time. We don't have the land. I we, still want to shoot that one eighty. Yeah, yeah, and it might happen. And that's the, that's the thing. If any of you guys are listening to this and you're new to bow hunting, you may have not even killed a deer yet. Kill something. We, kill the first legal deer that walks by your tree stand. Kill it. You know, you know get, be get, happy, it, get all, it out of your system. Honest, be, be happy with it. You know, you've you've got to, in order to learn how to kill stuff, you got to kill stuff. Right. You know, and because it seems easy in the backyard shooting a 3D target. It's a whole different story when you got a live animal out in front. Yes, of you. it is. You, you got to know? know what kind of movement you can get right. away with, what kind of sound you can get away and, with. You know, even there, there's Wind only the one way to find out. Yep. Yeah, find out on a little buck. Man, when it gets I, harder from there. Dude, when I first started bow hunting, I didn't know what tree stand hunting was. Yeah. You know, I, I was just trying to do it like I did with a rifle, and that meant you walked out and picked a tree on a ridge and you stood by it, or you know, mm-hmm. sat down and mm-hmm. and waited and. You know, when, when you're ground level with them trying to shoot a bow, that's a whole different ball game. Yep. And then I learned how to do it out of a tree. Yeah. Well, what, and then I learned what kind of trees to put them in. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't just go out there and pick the straightest, easiest tree that there is to put a stand in. No. Nope. You need a place to hide. Yep. You need to pick a tree with a bunch of crap in front of it and yeah. below you. Yep. But and you know what? What I say a couple of weeks ago. You know, going out there. And putting up a tree stand somewhere like you would rifle hunt out of, yeah, that's not bow hunting. No. It's, okay, well, it's bow hunting. It's just not doing it nearly the right way. Right. I want to hide mm-hmm. when when I'm bow hunting. And, and back to what you say, were saying, Jack, you do need to to put, you know, to learn it. And, man, when they first came out with the unlimited doe tags, I, I learned so much those le- first couple of years because we were whacking them and stacking them. Yep. And we ate it a lot. I gave a lot of it away. Um, I never got so sick of skinning deer in my life that year. <laughs> but I learned a ton. Yeah. And well, I'd be honest with you, old mature doe is probably harder to kill than a mature buck. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But. Well, even just learning how to take care of them in the field and stuff. Yeah. If you've never done that before, you need to experience. That's the only way to do it. It is. You know? Well, what were we originally talking about? Getting that that desire to go out there and yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm gonna, that stuff. I'm but. at a point now where I still love to go, uh, and I still want to shoot those nice deer. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, it's not... Used to be, I felt like if I wasn't out there, I was missing something. It might be that that time that he's going to walk under there. It might be. And I'd be from September 15th to January 15th. I didn't care. I was out there every day. And I'm to the point now where uh, Halloween's coming up. I might want to think about getting in a stand. Yeah. And it's going to be cold tomorrow. I'm not sure if I want to get out there that early. Right. But, you know, know, and after about November... (laughs) 20th it's cold it's starting to get cold and that indoor season and <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah but you and bob are walruses anyway i don't mean that i don't mean that in a bad way but y'all can handle the cold more and I'm, I'm from florida i don't like it cold i'm but, good as long as my feet don't get cold i'm yep, good there you go once my feet always my, get cold once my feet get cold i'm done except yep. when you get good boots um, and what's really hard is when you're only 200 yards from the back door, <laughs> staying yeah. out there, and you can yeah. smell when the you, coffee. When you, yeah, I'm going man, you, I could I could end this suffering really, really quick. <laughs> easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the bad thing is, you know, if you if you have to park and walk quite a ways, you get back to the car, you're already warm. You're like, what am I leaving for? <laughs> yeah, because mm-hmm. I just walk a mile and a half to warm up. But. I've done that so many times, and then I'm just going to go back and have breakfast. And I'm back having breakfast, going, man, I should have never left. You know, you're or, wondering, wondering and, and what then, you're, you're wondering what you're missing. You know, and, and then it's, man, I really don't want to walk back out. I know. There. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a nap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. You go back cash, out about three. <laughs> cash cabs on. <laughs> but but that's what, the thing. I used to go with a knife on my on my hip and my bow, and now you got cameras, you got books, you got uh, you know four gallons of water, fun size Snickers. Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> How many do you have to take five, if they're fun size, five. Jack? If they're fun size, you got to eat twenty. If I figured, if I I wasn't very good at math in school, that's but not, that's not paleo. So a one ounce. <laughs> I think I figured up. You have to eat. Wait, wait, wait. 20 to wait, wait, 30 on, fun size Snickers to equal one Snicker bar. Okay, and a normal Snicker bar is what? Eight ounces, if I, that? Yeah, I don't know. And the fun size are an don't, ounce. So don't ruin takes... this for me. No, I'm making sure your math's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my math to be I gonna, right. I was going to make sure you, you were on the low side. <laughs> but getting back to, you know, that desire and stuff, I I told Jack, it was, that's been a few months ago, we were talking about the antelope hunt. You know, we're all pretty jacked up to go and bob's excited to go and everything and what did i tell you i can't wait to go and what do i hope happens when we get there that you kill one and nobody else does <laughs> Besides, <laughs> that, okay. <laughs> the first time we talked oh. <laughs> no i i said i i hope jake kills one. Oh yeah just yep. because it's i mean and i hope jack kills I, one and i hope bob kills one and Jeremy, and I'm not sure the other guy's name that's going, what's his name? Brad. Brad. Mm-hmm. I hope they all kill one. And I don't care if I I want to kill one because I've never but, killed one. Before. But it's not the end all if you don't. No, because I I enjoy it so much when somebody else gets to kill something and they're happy about it. Yeah. And I got well, to be part of it. You know, this is my just sitting there in the blind or sitting in the tree stand with them if we're rifle hunting in a double stand. This I is my it. second trip out, and I kind of set it all up. So if I don't kill one and I don't kill the biggest one, I'm going to be pretty pissed. <laughs> he said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> like you meant it, too. <laughs> and I'll make sure Fred knows that first thing when I get out. You know, something we, something we should probably do, and we, we've mentioned it, but we need to get serious about it. We need to put together a Texas hog hunt. Have That'd you, be fun. Have you ever been? No. It is a blast. Yeah. It really is, especially if you get into the hogs. Oh, yeah. But I've been three or four times now and it's not that expensive either is it no it's not it's really not and it's a fun hunt because it's cool because you can do it after deer season so you still have you know when you're done hunting deer if you still want to go hunting if you ain't got it out of your system you can do it in like february march and it's not three degrees in texas right (laughs) and We've, and some of the stories that I could tell you are stuff that's <laughs> happened down there, man. Now, can we use a bow and a gun? Yeah, you can use either. That'd be fun. Well, you, I guys, had you a... guys remember Phil? Yeah. He's, he's got one of the funniest stories. Oh, yeah? Oh, man. I don't know if can I've Can you heard. tell it? Yeah, I can tell it. <laughs> Let's call Phil one week. Have him tell it. Oh, I tell yeah, it I better. Tell I've, okay. got, I've, actually right, tell got it. On, I've actually got Phil's, it on video. Phil's too nice a guy. He's too shy. Yeah. He, <laughs> are we, we going to say his last name? Shahan. Shahan, yeah. Okay. We used to go by Easton four hundred or something like that. We used to all well, have we used to all have names in the archery talk and archery site right. days and well, we went down there and this was a friend of his put it put this deal together. And it was on uh it was in Pearsall, Texas. We were like you ever heard of Los Angeles, Texas? Mm-hmm. It's like border the the <clears throat> mexican border it's practically in the river isn't it right so to the point where they told us if you see anybody out there walking in the mesquite don't say anything just let them keep walking don't let them know you're there <laughs> yeah just leave them alone yeah so we're out there and we we hunted probably two hard days and they had a, a fenced in pen that was like a hundred acre pen and that was like, we thought that was going to be like shooting fish in a barrel. You couldn't get on the hogs in there to save your life. Yeah. They knew exactly where, how to get around it. I mean, they're not dumb. So we're on our last night, and the guide tells us, well, y'all haven't had any luck, so we're going to take you on back in the ranch where nobody's been. So they take Phil back in there to the farthest one, and they put him over this feeder. Are you on the ground or sitting in tree stands? On the ground. We didn't even have any ground blinds. What they'd done was they'd, they'd take you and put you in a brushed-in spot by a feeder. So you're sitting there in the open, all brushed in, mind you. But when when the hogs start coming in, there's a real false sense of security there, yeah. right? So Phil 
sits there by the feeder and he said there's like a like a you know 50 70 pound little sow comes in and he shoots it well the ground is so dry there that if you don't get on the blood quick it soaks it up and and you lose the animal and they don't always bleed the best either so he decides he's going to go look for this thing so he gets up is it dark no not yet it's not dark <laughs> yet, yet. <laughs> so he gets up and he starts looking for it and he says i i'm not having any, any luck finding it and he goes i got a cramp and he says there's no going back so <laughs> he so over there taking care of business gets that done and starts back in looking for this hog and he goes all of a sudden i smelled the most horrible smell in my life he goes like ah. he goes i don't even know how to describe it and he goes i look up and he goes 20 yards from me there's these two huge boars and he goes they saw me about the same time i saw them and he goes the jaws started popping oh <laughs> and he goes here they come he said no he's in the one kind of rushed him for a, for a second and stopped at about 10 yards he goes i drew my bow he goes here it comes again. He goes, I got an arrow shot. And he goes, hit him right in the forehead. And he goes, all I can remember is I can hear that arrow going off through the woods. Tink, 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 tink. <laughs> he said, and the second one rushed me. He said, and I jumped up and grabbed this tree. And he goes, it was a mesquite tree. Oh. <laughs> and we get back to the, and he's telling this story. You know, he's scared to death. And we get back. So he dropped his bow. He drops his bow the whole nine <laughs> yards. This, this hog's running around with an arrow stuck out of his forehead <laughs> in the brush. He can't. He doesn't find his other hog, and we get back to the uh, the ranch, and he goes, "Man, something doesn't feel right." And we look down, and he's got a mes- about an inch long mesquite thorn jammed <laughs> oh, in the geez. calf of his leg. So <laughs> there we are with a pair of, with a pocket knife <laughs> and, a, and a pair of uh, needle nose pliers trying to get performing this, surgery performing surgery on him. <laughs> And he's and he's telling he's telling us this whole story while I'm digging this mesquite thorn out of his leg. And he goes, "You wouldn't believe it. That arrow just went tink 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 right there." <laughs> he's like, "I can hear it forever." Oh, tink, 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 tink. Well, did he get his bow? We did get his bow. We never did get a hog. But oh, it was a. If that riot. happened to me, there'd be another smell. I'm I'm afraid. Hey, we don't want to go. We don't want to go there. <laughs> that same night. That same night, they had they had electric golf carts there for us, right? Because all the senderos, had, you know, yeah. the roads, are, they, you know, it's a ranch. Yeah. And they're all electric golf carts, so you can sneak up on these hogs. I'm two miles from the ranch that same night, and my golf cart runs out of juice on the way back <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> so, and this is after having seen a mountain lion. What about rattlesnakes? I didn't see any rattlesnakes really? while I was there. Nope. But you got to see a mountain lion. In I did the get wild? to see a mountain lion. In Holy the wild. cow! That's you're, that's rare. It was it was it was pretty bizarre because I was on this sendero and I, I had hogs at one end of it and they weren't coming my way. So I I got the wind in my face. I'm thinking I'm going to sneak up and get me one of these hogs. So I'm in the edge of the brush sneaking up on them, and I look up and a doe is coming towards me. And she gets probably 40 yards from me and just locks up. And I, she, I know she doesn't see me, and I know she doesn't smell me, but she locks up like, you know, what the heck's going on here? Man, all of a sudden I hear her snort and poof, off through the brush she goes, and it wasn't but a second later a, a mountain lion hops out of the other side of the road in, in like one, one, one hop from one side of the road to the other and off into the brush again. I was like, I'm going to the house. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> I am done. So that was pretty cool. Since we're on hogs, what do you guys think about Missouri banning any type of hog hunting? Are they banning it? I think they're going to ban it, aren't they? Didn't you see that? I heard, heard anything Why is that? I better look into it before I say anything. Well, I think what it is is I think. <laughs> I better look into it, but I'm not going to. Well, All right, let's have it. Well. <laughs> It's better this way. I think what it is is guys guys release hogs. They think people release hogs in Missouri oh, because I'm they, sure they because did. they want to hunt them and they want to like maybe start an outfitting business hunting them. But they they're destroying crap. 
Right. And so there for a long time, Missouri made it to where if you saw a hog, shoot on sight. Whatever you had, whatever you were hunting with, shoot them. But I think they may be doing this just to put a stop to anybody saying, hey, we got hogs and you can shoot them with whatever you want. Shoot them on site. You don't need a license. You know, well, I think in Missouri you you had to have a, a valid, small game license yeah, or small, something. Or a turkey tag or whatever you were hunting at the time. Well, they got them in Mark Twain National Forest yeah. down south. I mean, yeah, but I think, I think they're, I, you know, I, I'm, I need to look into it before I comment too much, but I think that what the deal is is they don't want anybody to make money off of them. Um, uh, you know, taking people out hunting. Right. No outfitters. Yeah. Well, shoot, we didn't used to have armadillos either, but they're one, all over the place now. Yeah. One year we were down in St. Clair County. And, uh, how far we, south is that from here? Uh, Appleton City. It's 100 miles south Good. of here. And, uh, we were doing a deer drive for my dad and spooked up a chocolate fallow deer that had gotten loose from a a game farm. I mean, he had a beautiful rack on him and I'll whole nine going. yards. Well, what yeah. happens if you can you shoot one of them? You, yeah, you can shoot them. They want you to because it's uh, feral. Exotic? It's feral at that point. Huh. An invasive species. An invasive species. I'll be darned. I didn't know you could shoot them. I thought if they wasn't allowed, you couldn't do it. Huh. So, we didn't well, get it done, but we, we all seen it. Well, it was, <laughs> it, man, it was bizarre. We thought, is that an elk? <laughs> <laughs> Recap us real quick, Jack. What, what, what do we go over? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Tree stand. I would go back and listen to this podcast. <laughs> and stop about 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> we are in an hour. That went by quick. I mean, that was a good discussion tonight. I enjoyed it. I did too. But uh, I don't know if anybody else does, but I enjoyed hey, it. Hey, it's just us. Yeah. <laughs> We're paying for it. <laughs> so Everybody else get it for free. He yeah. does have a point. <laughs> True. So, so we'd, basically, uh, if you're going to start getting ready for bow hunting this year, you know, check out your tree stands. Check them out in the garage. Don't check them out in the field. You know, that's a little too late then. But check them out at the house if you took them down last year. If you didn't, be proactive and get everything ready. Safety harnesses, lifelines. Mm-hmm. Just be careful. One that's, thing. we're Yeah, getting, we want you to listen to us more. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. We're getting made it through this one. We probably should have been doing this a long time ago. We got three weeks left, but we need to be shooting our broadheads. I brought them last week. Well, you didn't say anything. Uh, you know, I'll wait till after the classic's over, and then I'll get. Yeah. But uh, well, we'll be bow hunting the, what, the weekend before or the weekend after. after the classic. Is it the weekend after? When's the classic? Fourth through the seventh. Yeah. Oh, okay. After. Well, what's? Isn't there something after that too? I don't know. That I'm so focused on that that uh, fourth through the second. I got tunnel vision. That's coming up pretty quick. In yeah. Huh. So. Well, anything else? I think we're good. We need to take our bows out and shoot some cicadas. They're about to drive me nuts. I don't know if people can hear them on the podcast. <laughs> Is it dark not. yet? No, I don't think no. so. Eight fourteen? No, it's not no. dark yet. <clears throat> so, so bring our boat. I couldn't take my boat to work today. It's too hot. To leave it in the car. I was going to yeah, bring it. Yeah, it's up. been brutal, man. This is day brutal. number five of an excessive heat warning. It's supposed to cool down Sunday. so Yeah, but look at the extended. It cools down for a couple of days, and it jumps right back up into 96, 97. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Well, Can't wait. Yeah. So, anyway, um, go check us out on bowdudes.com. We are on the Outdoor Podcast channel. If you're listening to this, you're probably subscribed to that. Um, Facebook is The Bow Dudes. Twitter. Twitter is at Bow Dudes and Instagram is the Bow Dudes. We're going to try to do a better job of putting a lot of stuff on Instagram and stuff. That's my favorite. That's my favorite social media. I just downloaded it. Now. I just downloaded it last week. And yeah. quite frankly, it's just another addiction I don't need. Oh, it's, <laughs> it can be addictive. It can be very addictive. Now, the, the one thing you got to remember about stuff like that is you have to turn off the notifications. Speaking of. Because if not, every time somebody posts, you get a notification. Your phone all day long is going ding, oh, yeah. ding, ding, Speaking ding. of dumb addictions, Pokemon Go, really? Hey, we found a lot. Of, we did really well in St. Joe today. If you're looking, if you're in the St. Joe area, you're looking for Pokemon, go down by Patey Park, by the Jesse James Museum and all that. Hey, can we have Joe. your man card? 
Yeah, right? Hey, you got to catch them all, Gary. You got to catch them all. What are they? They're Pokemon. Okay, and I why don't we try why don't we try this new app called Workymon where people that don't have jobs go out and try looking for one. If people would search for jobs oh, as hard as they try to find a, these stupid Pokemon. That's a Facebook meme. That's why I don't like on Facebook anymore. Yeah, well That's I why like, I like Instagram. I don't like Pokemon. Dump, or dump Facebook. It is. Dump Facebook except for our page and then go to Instagram. And we'll somebody some please write that. in and tell me what a Pokemon is because I honestly have no earthly idea. <laughs> Ask one of my girls. You got to catch them all. See you next. <laughs> see you next week. Hang on, we got we got to say bicycle. See in the funny papers. Shut screw, up and shoot. You know what? Screw bicycle. We did this on Friday, so he would be here, and he's not here. Heck with bicycle. You said it three times. Bicycle. Is that, is that like saying <laughs> <laughs> Beetlejuice? No, wait a minute. <laughs> we got to do it in his voice. Bicycle. <laughs> see, you the, the, see you in the funny papers. <laughs> no, his is different. <laughs> This is like, how does his go? Who? How does Bob's go? He says, see you in the funny papers. <laughs> see you in the funny papers. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> see you in the funny papers. Bo Dude's impressions. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> That's <laughs> probably Vinny. <laughs> BR549. <laughs> Junior <Wait>. sample. <laughs> All right. See ya. See ya. Bye. Shut up and shoot. Ball <laughs> <Miles> Ziggle. <laughs>